And you see Sister Kelly and Sister Kelly's mother still over there shouting in. And that's Sister Valerie's mother. And Sister Valerie's sister, if y'all if you didn't know, and and well, amen. Brother Martell's mom is Sister Kelly. Hey, we can we can keep going down the line. We could we'll be naming half the church in a minute, Sister Jackson. But you see them still shouting. Because they they they, they understand that yes. prayer works. And God has a funny way of showing up when you least expect him to show up. In a way that you least expect him to show. Yeah, man, they've been praying and praying and praying and believing and praying and praying and believing and praying and praying and believing and praying and praying and believing. And The enemy kept saying, it's not going to happen. It ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's, it's impossible. It can't happen. But God said, I don't care what the devil says because the devil doesn't have any authority around here. <laughs> Amen. And the Lord has a way of just doing some things. Sometimes it just blows the minds of man. Flat blows the minds of man. Glory to God. We thank you. We do have an outgoing appointment today. We need to be out of here no later than 3.15 or so. And, and that's without you all stopping to get something, please. Uh, it starts, the service starts at 3.30 over there. I know it's a rush for us. I know. I know when I planned it and when I agreed to do it that it was going to be a rush for us. Uh, now I say that, but if there's people in here that need deliverance or salvation... We'll have a team here for you. We'll make sure that you get prayed through whatever you need. We, we're, not, we're, not, we're not so vain. Amen. To think that, that nothing here is important. If God is moving, God is moving. Amen. So we just believe him. Uh, we just sing a song. and uh, it, uh, it, it, The best day of my life. And, and sometimes we get uh, kind of caught up. I was telling my wife on uh, last night. We were listening to that song by its originator. And. Uh, who was singing it and, I, and I, I looked at my wife I said you know what yeah I like the song but Sister Tasha sings that song so much better yeah. amen <laughs> I might be biased I don't know but it just it I think the amen thank you brother Nigel that's what I was about to say the anointing makes the difference yeah. amen now I don't know nothing about the person who sings it originally. I don't know their life. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not coming against them or, or downgrading them. I just said, you know, some people like chocolate ice cream. Some people like vanilla ice cream. Amen. Some people like something else. But uh, amen. I'm just telling you that, that I like that better. And every now and then, I want to let our, our praise singers and our musicians know, amen, that y'all awesome. Yeah. Amen. Choir, awesome. Praisers and worshipers in the congregation, y'all awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. There is a story in the Bible, and it, um, it talks pretty clearly about what happened after Jesus' resurrection. We, we know that Mary showed up. We know that... Uh, Amen, and found the tomb empty. We know that, and God began to deal with them accordingly and told them to go and tell them what's going on. Don't just keep it to yourself. Now, I don't know, but can you imagine being the mother of Jesus who had solved the grotesque mistreatment of her child? As far as we know, amen, she witnessed it all. Can you, can you imagine her, her, her emotion, her emotional state? When Jesus said in Mark, the 15th chapter, verse 34, they, they, they don't have anything back there. And, and I don't mean that because it's their fault. It's my fault. I didn't give them anything. And the scripture says, and in the ninth hour, from the third hour of the day to the ninth, that's for six hours on a cross. 
third hour of the day, I mean the ninth hour of the day, Jesus said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have they forsaken me? Now, that had to be one of the most miserable days in the life, 33 and a half years of Christ. Had to be that, that body for the first time ever was without the spirit of God in him. But I, wanna, I just want to look back at the mother. I just want to look back at the mother and how she said what she, what she witnessed. Because immediately following that, the Bible lets us know that he gave up the ghost. And he died. And the agony was now turned into mourning. Because now she was seeing and becoming a witness to people climbing up, ripping his flesh from the nails, pulling his tattered body down from an old rugged cross. Wrapping him up in clothes because he was there naked. Or in sheets or whatever. And carting him off. You know, and, and let's back up just a minute. Thinking about what are we going to do with his body. But somebody offered, said, you can borrow my tomb. You can use my tomb. You can have it. Because it, it really, they weren't giving it to him for a short period. They were giving it to him. But he didn't need it that long. Y'all know that. And that seems like the worst day imaginable. Can you, can you just, 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 just let your imagination go there with me? That seemed like the worst day ever. I've just witnessed my son being whipped and destroyed, hung on a cross for everybody to see, humiliation, people talking about him. She had to be standing there when they were speaking so negatively about him. And knowing that he hadn't done anything wrong. And knowing the promise of God when he gave her the child. Knowing all those things. And yet having to witness the death. But that third day. You talking about the best day of somebody's life. Getting close to that grave. And just hearing, he's not there. I feel the Holy Ghost just right there. I don't, I don't know if anybody else. What I'm trying to tell you is. <laughs> sometimes you feel like you're in the worst storm of your life. <laughs> but God has a way of taking your bad day and flipping your worst nightmare all around. It was a good day for her. But I'm here to tell you, it's a great day for me. Because if he had not done it, I'd have no hope of eternity. But I'm glad about it. So when I say, like the song says, today, shall be the best day. I don't care if the car is broke down. I, I don't care if the money is gone. I, I don't care what's going on today. Come on, somebody with some bills that are mounting up on you ought to be able to just stand up right now and say, I don't care. I know the tomb was empty. Oh. Uh. Amen. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? A cry in the middle of the day. Amen. Y'all can be seated if you want to. A cry that was heard in the middle of the day and people began to wonder what was he saying?
Was it was it was it saying that he was uh, Elias? What was he saying? People that didn't understand didn't know uh, that he was God manifested in the flesh. People that hung him up uh, thought that they just had some guy, some prophet. People still think that some places. Some people thought that we just got a man, a man that was getting on our nerves, making a wreck out of our religious practices. But what I'm glad about today, I'm hoping you're with me, what I'm glad about today, that it doesn't matter for his name, the name of Jesus went down in history and everybody that tried to erase it has failed to do so. They tried to take it out of the church and they try to take it out of the schools. And matter of fact, they try to take it out, amen, of our nation. But let me help somebody deep down on the inside and let you know that once you take on the name of Jesus, you are living testimony. You are walking, amen, example that when he died, he rose again. I'm happy about it. I'm glad that my Savior lives. How do you know, preacher? Because he lives down inside of me. Can I help you right now? No matter how messed up your life might have been before you walked in these doors, God's got a better day set down for you. Your ladder, your right now, is going to be greater than your yesterday. Sister Kelly, Mama Dolly and family, you just seen the tip of the iceberg. Sister Zakian, let me talk to you right now. Mama and Daddy, come on sister and brother, they're coming in. Why? Because today is going down in the chronicles of history. I'm not going to believe the lie of the enemy. I'm going to believe the word of God. Can you praise him with me? Today will be, amen, the best day of our life. Now I'm going to say something to you. what the translators translate to mean my God my God why have thou forsaken me amen that was the flesh crying out in the last moment of life amen when the spirit of God had to move away from him for God could not have anything to do with sin do I have somebody with an understanding right now amen I know it sounds kind of peculiar for the Christ to be saying that God has left me but the good news is that he only left him for a season for after the deed was done after that the sacrifice was made he allowed him to show himself amen as a corpse why for three days for those hours made a proof that it wasn't just a happenstance he couldn't just stay in a grave as somebody that was drugged or knocked out or just wounded they wanted to shut the devil's mouth and let come on somebody some of you are going through a little something right now that is impossible for you to get out because God's setting up hey man a potential break out that's going to blow the mind of this whole world some of you are struggling right now with no bad situation don't you dare despair don't you get dismayed know that my God Amen. 
said it himself. He lied. Come on, you're not left behind. You're not forsaken. You're not forgotten about. God is going to do it. Those tears that trench your pillow at night. Those prayers that have bruised your knees. Amen, horse. From all your prayer and praising, God understands who you are. And he sees you right where you are. But there's some impossible things that he's going to use. I know we got to get out of here. (laughs) But I just heard God speaking. There's some impossible things. Mm -hmm. And I know we're live streaming. And I'm checking with God right now. Before I say what I'm going to say. Because it might offend somebody on the other end. Go, Lord. Mm. You've been around me a long time, y'all. Y'all know. Sister Jones, revelation is coming to your family. God just spoke. They're wasting their time kicking against the pricks. Revelation. He's not going to leave them outside. They fight what they know not. They're like Paul on the road to Damascus. They're doing what they think is right. They're fighting because their religion says they're right. But there is coming a revelation. You better get ready. Because it sounds impossible. It seems ludicrous. But my God. the Eli Eli Jesus said some other words it is finished it is finished Don't you be afraid of what happens because I said that. There's some dying of the flesh that takes place before the living of the soul or of the spirit. Unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, it can't bring forth fruit. So there will come offense and there will come anger and there will come frustration. 
but it's a breaking process. And can I tell you something? Your family is not the only one. Sister Anderson back there. Let me tell you something right now. I know what they think or what they think they think. But God is in this thing. Mama's about to blow your mind. See the open shut up. This is the season of your family. This is the season right now. Your prayers are being heard. Your sacrifices are being heard. What you're seeing is the killing off of the flesh. What you're seeing is the breaking of the flesh. What you're feeling is the breaking of the flesh. So you didn't have to put that on live stream. We could have. No. The devil needs to know that we're drawing a line in the sand. And our families will be delivered. And our families will be saved. And our families will be worshipers. I'm not ashamed of the Bible. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. This is what's going to get us where we're going. And yes, it takes all that and more. God's going to be visiting them in their dreams. God's going to be visiting them in their dreams. I'm telling you right now. Just like Pallet's wife told him, leave that alone. Don't get messed up in that. You're about to do something crazy. And Pallet had enough sense to wash his hand from the crime that was about to be committed. I'm trying to tell somebody in here right now, there is a visitation that's taking place in their home. Come on to this altar. I'm, I'm shutting it down. Come on to this altar. Come on to the altar. But come on to praise. Don't come up here just like I'm just asking you. Come up here because you're declaring it for yourself right now. Come on. You ought to be rushing this altar right now. Crying for your saved, unsaved loved ones. Crying for your unsaved work co-workers. And crying for the students in school. Crying out right now. Save my family. Don't let them go to hell. Save them. Send revelation. If they won't hear you, pray that God send a word from somebody they will hear. Save them. Whatever it takes, save them. Pull them out of the fire before it's too late. Come on. 
Come on, you need to be calling their names out. The enemy's got a target on their back. The enemy's trying to wipe them out. But I'm here to tell you, you're greater than anything that the enemy can muster up. You are greater. You're more than conquerors. Your prayer means something. Your difference means something. Come on, McKivens, all them sisters that are not in here, all them that are still fighting and kicking against this thing, you let them know, amen, that they will be saved and they will, come on, come on, in the name of, they will put down the things they're not supposed to be doing and they will pick up what God has for them. Come on, little Josh. Come on. Your whole household is depending on you and Layla. Your whole household is depending on you. Come on. You're the strong man in that house. Amen. The Holy Ghost has so ordained it. Your prayers will make a difference. Y'all can cut the stream, I'm sorry. Come on. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, 